So, unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you're familiar with Kit. The brand has exploded onto the streetwear scene in the last few years and its founder, Ronnie Fogg, has become a household name in the sneaker industry. But how did it get to this point? Let's find out. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is the history thus far of Kit. But before we get into it, don't forget to smash that like button. Liking and sharing the video is the best way to help us to continue to grow as a channel and we can't do it without you guys' help. But with that being said, let's jump right into it. Ronnie Feig has been working in the sneaker industry since the age of 13. When he got his first job working for his second cousin, David Zakin, at his New York City shoe store known as David Z. Legend has it, his cousin offered him money at his bar mitzvah when he was a kid, which Ronnie turned down. Rather than take the money, he asked David if he could have a job at his shoe store. David agreed, and Ronnie started out in the stock room where he would work long hours in the back of the store. One day after falling off the top of the ladder and almost busting his head open, his cousin decided that he would try to kid out in the front, because after all, at least this would be safer for him. Turns out, the kid had a knack for the sneaker game, and he would thrive at the shop. By the age of 25, he had moved his way up the ladder to become the company's head buyer and was also in charge of custom sneakers. This will begin his journey into collaborations. The first brand that he worked with was Asics. The story goes, when he was a kid, he wanted a pair of Reebok pumps, like all kids at the time when they came out. His mom couldn't afford them, so she ended up buying him a pair of Asics gel lights because they were cheaper. But because of this, when he grew up, he decided to go with the lesser known brand for his first ever collaboration, which sold out immediately after being featured on the cover of Wall Street Journal. This not only opened the door for more collaborations, but it showed Ronnie that maybe he was on to something here. Because after all, the Asics Gel Light collab was a David Z collab, technically, on paper, although it was Ronnie Fire who actually did the work. But that collab really got the creative juices flowing for Ronnie, and he decided to flirt with the idea of his own brand. It started in 2007 when he was still working at David Z. With a handful of tees and jackets with the name Kith on them, this would originally introduce the term to the world. In 2010, Fyg decided to go out on his own completely. He partnered with Sam Ben Avram, owner of the clothing boutique Atrium. Sam originally wanted to hire Ronnie to run his shoe department, but Fike had bigger plans in mind. He was able to negotiate a deal with Sam to run his shoe department, but only if it was co-branded under the Kit brand banner. The idea did so well that in 2011, the very first Kit standalone locations were opened in Manhattan and Brooklyn. And at first, Kith only stocked sneakers from brands like Adidas, Nike, Clarks, and Timberland. And of course, Ronnie's own collaborations, which he was in full swing of doing at this time. But Kith would quickly become home for special releases, and people would even sleep out front of the store when limited and new drops came out. And if you ever wondered what Kith actually means, it's a Middle Eastern term stemming from the phrase Kith and Ken, which loosely translates into friends and family, which... I had no idea of before going into this. People weren't just buying into the brand though. They were also buying into their motto, Just Us. The tagline spoke to how they wanted people that worked at the store, that walked into the shop, or whoever bought their stuff to feel. They wanted everyone to know that they were part of something special, part of a family, hence the name. After buying a pair of cargo pants at Atrium and customizing it, Fi got so many requests for him that he decided it was time to launch Kit's own official in-store clothing line. And in 2014, Fi launched Kit the Classics, the brand's basic clothing and accessory label. The launch coincided with the reopening of Kit's Soho store in New York, which was redesigned by Daniel Arsham and Alex Mustard. At that time, Kit also started to sell apparel from other brands like Off-White and Acronym. Fire credits its success thus far to savvy consumers who wear brands on the street not following what other streetwear labels are doing and always trying to do something unique. Whether some of us like it or not, 
The lines of where streetwear is headed going into the future are becoming more and more obscured. It's more about individuality and creating a unique look for yourself that could now include wearing any type of apparel. It's not about following trends as much as it's about finding fashionable ways to be unique. Kith follows a similar release schedule as that of Fear of God, which is to say, there really isn't one. They don't follow a traditional release schedule, opting to kind of release whatever they want when they want to. Which is freeing on one hand for the brand because they don't have to focus on making pieces to suit the weather. But on the other hand, I've always thought it was a little weird to be dropping hoodies and sweats when it's the start of summer. But hey, I live in Texas and it gets hot as fuck here. Maybe some of you cooler weather climate people can understand it a bit more. Fike told Business of Fashion recently, quote, It's very easy to blow this thing out of proportion and give people what they want. But it's important to keep your brand special. I'm holding back heavy. I see that the market, wholesale, and other brand collaborations have been saturated." End quote. Kit doesn't do traditional wholesale, meaning the brand can only be found in Kit's locations, but they've done a ton of collabs over the years, including Levi's, Coca-Cola, Russell Athletic, Tommy Hilfiger, Michelin S, Bergdorf Goodman, BMW, and tons of others. And although I'll admit, some of those had me like, wait, what? Most of the collabs really work. They seem to like align with the brand. Over the years, Kith has done things the right way. Rather than leaning hard into trends and hype, Kith has seemingly stayed true to itself. A result of this is long lasting fandom. They mainly focus a lot on culture, sneaker culture, streetwear culture, New York culture. His Brooklyn store recently underwent a $2 million renovation and expansion from 800 square feet to 3,000 square feet. And in homage to teens from every walk of life, the expansion space became Kit Treats, a cereal and ice cream bar that offers 24 different cereals and 25 different toppings. The idea is to entice customers into the physical stores where they can stay as long as they want and just kind of hang out even if they don't have money to buy any clothes at the time. Over the years, Runny Fog and Kit have done things seemingly, like I said, the right way. They seem to have learned from the mistakes of some of the brands before them and made the tweaks to withstand the normal fickleness of the streetwear consumer. They're going strong now with no signs of slowing down. And when we look at what has made them successful, much is due to their slow and steady growth pattern. They never set out to capitalize off hype. Hell, their first collaboration was with ASICS, a second or third tier sneaker brand that many of us sort of ignore or didn't consider in the sneaker community. And when they started to make clothes, they stayed true to the vibe that they originally set. I recently got a question from a viewer in the comment section that was asking me if I had any advice for someone launching a new streetwear brand. And I have to say that Kith is a good example to follow and how to grow, but not outgrow your usefulness but what do you think are you a fan of kit hit us in the comment section and let us know also if you haven't already don't forget to smash that like button liking and sharing the video is the best way to continue to help us grow as a channel and like i said earlier we really can't do it without you guys help and if you want to be updated every time we drop a new episode then make sure to hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell this way you'll be dinged with each new episode drops but with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com signing out. Until next time, peace.